So Maya Bialik, uh, this is, I think, our fourth year in a row talking to you, and you've had three Emmy nominations, Comedy Supporting Actress for The Big Bang Theory. I like to think that Gold Derby's your lucky charm. So maybe fourth time will be the charm. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But listen, we got to start at the end of the season, because, I mean, my jaw dropped when uh, Sheldon and Amy broke, well, well, Amy broke up with Sheldon. Uh, well, I, I well, don't know, I don't know if I consider it breaking up, you know, I think that um, the, the writers are really specific with the language that they used, and what it was was that Amy needed some time, and she needed to take a step back. Um, I know that everybody sort of like read that as, oh my God, she broke up with him. But um, the way I see it is that this is a, a, a sense of breathing space and the relationship I actually think allows for that. You know, it's such an unusual relationship um, that to me, of course, it's devastating and it's sad and all of the other things that Sheldon must be feeling. Uh, but I also think it's still within the realms of what works for their relationship and their communication. Yeah, I know. It, it's wonderful. Now, when you got that script, did it also include the, the the second jaw dropper was that Sheldon had a ring for Amy. Did you did you know that too, or did you? Kind um, of just... No, I mean I had vaguely heard that there might be you know kind of a big uh, cliffhanger, but yeah, I mean when we did the table reading, I think Kaylee Cuoco Sweeting you know might have gasped the loudest. You know we were shocked, like everybody gasped. It was it was very it's powerful. <laughs> yeah, and it it I mean who would think that I mean. Shamey or the new Ross and Rachel. I mean, it's just, uh, it's great. And I think back to, we mentioned you've had three Emmy nominations. For the three years you've been a series regular, to, just if you could take us back to that guest spot at the end of season three. I mean, you had just sort of were dipping your toe back into acting after getting your PhD. And what do you remember of that being approached and uh, deciding? Uh -huh. I, I wasn't approached. There was no decision. I, I auditioned for it. Like I auditioned for a lot of other jobs that were guest spots at that time. Um, I auditioned. Wait, wait, wait. You had to, Blossom had to audition? What was uh, it? It, it had, I had been out of the industry for uh, almost 13 years. So, you know, there, there's wow. no sense that because you were on a, you know, a family show in the 90s that wasn't even honestly that popular or critically acclaimed, that that means you don't have to audition, you know, 15 years later. Um, no, I, I auditioned with a group of very talented actresses, none of whom were scientists, and I was in a room with all those women, and um, it was an audition like any other. So I was looking for, for any work at that time. I had never seen The Big Bang Theory. I really knew nothing about the show. I literally knew nothing about the show. I, I had to Google who Jim Parsons was uh, for that audition because I was told to play a female version of him. Wow. Okay, I, 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 in all my research, I hadn't realized that. I really just thought that they had come to you. Now, they did, when they bring you back in season four, I mean, they did come to you at least to find out what Amy did for a living, right? Didn't um, you? No, no. They, <laughs> I, I'm just a hired help. That's, that's really how it works. No, uh, you know, Bill Prady and Chuck Lorre uh, were our, our executive producers and all of our talented writers. Um, decided every really everything about my character. You know, Bill Prady, I think, said that they made her a neurobiologist so I could answer things if they were wrong, but um, they did all of that stuff on their own. <laughs> oh, gosh, okay. Here I was thinking it was a l slightly more collaborative. Uh, but now, it, I think, but it, it does feel like it is now in the sense that it is season eight, and yet they've done, those really brilliant writers have constantly reinvented the dynamics within the group. And, um, you know, I've always been fascinated by Amy's relationship um, with Kaylee Cuoco's character. I mean, what, <laughs> what is going on there? Um, well, you know, I think that our writers have played with different aspects of all of these different relationships, you know, throughout the years. And I think, you know, in certain seasons, we had a lot more of that sort of, um, you know, Amy's sort of social coming out, which being um, drawn into this social group really was for her kind of a coming out. Uh, these were new things for her to have friends like this and attractive friends. And so I think that's sort of, you know, people say like she's bi-curious. You know, I, I think it's really sweet that um, Amy in her kind of, you know, growing awareness of sexuality realizes that, you know, beautiful people are beautiful and attractive things are attractive. and um, yeah, I think we, we've been able to have a lot of fun with it. And, you know, and it's interesting because, uh, again, doing some research and the other day, people were trying to pin you down on 
labeling different characters, including Sheldon. And I really liked your answer, which is let's not do that. Let's not slot each person into a little pigeonhole. Right. Well, I think we have the rest of the psychiatric and medical world that does that. <laughs> so I don't know that we need to do it on, on our sitcoms. Uh, you know, I think it's really sweet that our show is not about um, people, w that there's something wrong with them and everyone wants to change them. It's about people who are really different, um, different from societal norms and still have relationships and jobs and successful lives and um, interesting lives and fun and all those things. So I, I think that's a really sweet kind of message of our show. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like I was saying about, uh, you know, Sheldon and Amy Shamey becoming the new Ross and Rachel, of course, I think back to your beginnings on TV and you were had doubly blessed, right? I think you had a show called Malloy that uh, had a six episode run. And I believe right. Jennifer Aniston was on that, wasn't she? Correct. Yeah, and Jennifer Aniston played my older sister on uh, the show that I did right after Beaches, and which failed and then led to Blossom. But yeah, I, I had uh, uh, several months, many months working with Jennifer Aniston when I was a teenager. And now you're, like I said, the, the, the new Jennifer Aniston. I mean, people are so <laughs> invested in Sheldon and Amy. And I think it's a real testament to both you and Jim Parsons uh, that they've embraced them like that, because I think you know, you said you had to Google Big Bang. I mean, in those first couple of years, I mean, Shamey, excuse me, Amy has softened Sheldon somewhat. Right. I mean, when you right. look. Yeah, so. I, I, well, I, I, think, I think what we've seen is once you introduce new characters, it allows us to see different facets of the characters that people already loved. You know, so even with the Penny character, um, you know, we, we got to see her sort of shift as the socially dominant, you know, um, person, whereas otherwise she's the intellectually not dominant person, you know, in all of the scenes with the guys. So I think adding Melissa Roush and adding myself, like, I think that really shifted that component. And I think also with all the characters, you know, once you add people and you start to see different relationships, you get to see different aspects. And I, I think that's part of the sort of longevity of the show. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's been renewed for another couple of years now. I think you've got... Yeah, we have two more. Two more, and 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 you are in the next two years. It's not like I got nothing else to do. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep showing up at work and see what happens. Well, what you, uh, I mean, I think what we can all be guarantee you'll have to do is go to the Emmys in uh, September. And I know you get asked this question every year uh, by us because we're Emmy nuts. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the fun of the Emmys is you have to pick one episode of the 22 that sort of you think is your best showcase. Right. Do, you, do you think it'll be the season finale? Do you have any sense um, of what it might be? I mean, I, I, I actually usually, I don't pick my scenes. Um, I, I, ask, um, I ask three people. I ask Bill Prady. I asked Parsons and I okay. asked my manager and my, and my publicist. So um, I don't pick my own scenes. I, I never watch the shows in their entirety. Um, you know, the season finale is not a particularly comedically strong episode. And uh, that's sort of the challenge, you know, there's a lot of meaningful episodes that I had this year, but um, I- but It doesn't have to be, listen, even though it's called comedy supporting actress, right. you don't have to be funny. I mean, you know. Know. There's plenty of episodes where I'm not funny. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I, I don't really, I'm not a very good judge, you know, of myself. So I, I leave it to, to other people who have better perspective than I. And I, you know what, I think you're absolutely, that's such a good thing. I, I remember talking to uh, somebody who's won two Emmys for their CBS show recently. And she said, I have nothing to do with it. I have... For years, I was picking mine and never winning, and now I let other people do it. Well, I've um, never won even not picking, so maybe I should <laughs> pick. Maybe that would do. Well, you know, I think it's it's sort of coming, you're coming into your own with this character, too, and I think, because I think that what you've managed to do is what might have been seen by some people as one note, and you've kind of now got this whole symphony to well, your character. You. I, I credit our writers, and I, I credit you know the wonderful actors I get to work with. That's that's who really brings it alive. Well, and like you know, with Jim Parsons, and gosh, I mean, every you know the guy's got what four Emmys now. I mean, you know, it's 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 like playing tennis. If he doesn't have the right partners on the other side of the net, uh, it's going to be a pretty boring game. So. Right. Uh, well, listen, we certainly at Gold Derby, uh, thank you for your time and wish you well with this uh, Emmy season. And, thank uh, you. <laughs> okay.